Welcome back. Now, the conflict between Hamas and Israel has been marked by a history of tension and violence, with both parties holding deep-seated grievances and conflicted territorial claims. Now, one of the notable incidents in this ongoing struggle is a series of attacks launched by Hamas, a Palestinian militant group against Israel and Israel in return. Now, William Ronaldinho Mini, an impassionate young economic and political activist, joins me in studio this morning to share his views on the ongoing conflict and, of course, that case that was brought forth to the International Court of Justice. William, a very good morning. Thank you for being here this morning. How are you doing? Good morning to you. I'm well, thank you. How are you this morning? No, I'm good, thank you. Wonderful. First and foremost, of course, we know those events that began on October 7th last yes. year uh, that have really culminated to what we see much of today. Yes. Uh, just going back to October 7th, what did you make of you know, those initial events leading up to October 7th mm. but also you know, the events after October 7th? Uh, um, basically, um, when it comes to October 7th, um, we need to look at it from all points, basically, because um, the attack by Hamas on mm. Israel, firstly, um, the policies by the far-right Israeli government led or basically the enabling of settler violence led to a sense of desperation by, by the Palestinian people. Because this has been an ongoing conflict that we must always remember. Yes. And it called for, for the demand of reaction um, from somewhere, basically. And at the same time, um, the policies of the far-right uh, Israeli government um, allowed that, 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 that uh, um, the Israeli forces move out of the south and into the north mm -hmm. to, to guard the settlements there. And this gave Hamas the, the, the justification and the opportunity to attack. And I believe that the attack, uh, um, it raised questions in the international community yes. to say that, uh, um, was it patriotic or was it a terrorist attack? Mm -hmm. yeah. And it introduced a quarrel of legal and from legal and moral perspectives, perspectives at this yes, point. Yeah. But uh, um, one thing that we can note is that um, it shed light on the Palestinian uh, conflict with Israel. It gave us uh, a world, as the world, it gave us a view on what's actually happening, mm -hmm. what has been happening, because it's, 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 it's always been... been Such been, a far-fetched, yes, nobody it, really knew what was going on, you know. It was always <laughs> kept away. Yeah. And now, with the attack by Hamas on the 7th of October, it highlighted it all, that these people have actually been trying to gain freedom and liberation for so many years, but have never, never actually uh, 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 had the opportunity to yep. get it. So now you have Hamas, a so-called terrorist group, uh, um, labeled so by certain Western countries. But now it, it, it raises the question, was it patriotic? Or was it terrorist? Because there yeah. is no such thing as liberation without mm -hmm. retaliation, retaliation from groups yeah. like Hamas. Yeah. And what did you make of, of, of Israel's argument throughout you know, this entire scenario where they maintain that you know, they're fighting terrorists, the terrorists being Hamas? Uh, we saw that at, at The Hague, um, in front of the, the, the International Court of Justice, yep. Um, where Israel argued on technicalities, etc., etc., saying that um, they are only responding to Hamas yes. and they're only killing Hamas. Yes. That, that's their only target. Yes. But then it raises the question, um, but are these children and, and women that are, are being killed, these civilians, um, are they also part of Hamas? Mm -hmm. we, saw, uh, um, we, saw, we, saw, we saw Israeli militants singing in a video that, that surfaced to the media on the 7th of December 2023, mm -hmm. where Israeli militants were singing uh, um, that they're going to occupy Gaza, mm -hmm. um, destroy Hezbollah, mm -hmm. and, and ultimately wipe off the seed of Amalek from the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. And those are, those are, at, those are basically, um, it attributes to, 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 to their genocidal intent yeah. and ethnic cleansing of the mm -hmm. Palestinian people. Yeah. When you look at, you know, what has happened so far, you've had about 20,000 uh, deaths, if mm. I remember correctly. Um, about 50,000 people have been injured. Mm. About 80% of Palestinians, 80 to 90% have been displaced in this entire yes. situation. What do you make of, you know, the extent to which the situation has escalated, but also the general response from the global community? Ah, when it comes to the global community's response, um, in terms of, 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 of the Middle Eastern conflict. Um, we have seen certain Western countries yeah. who claim to be the champions of, of democracy, freedom and justice um, that have kept silent when it came to the Palestinian conflict. Yeah. Um, when it came to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, 
um, certain members of, of the international community were very quick to sanction Russia. But when it came to the Palestinian conflict, they were quite silent, even in, in, in the ICG case. siding with Israel, even, exactly. you know, openly siding. You know, For yeah. example, um, um, not to mention, yeah. but, but very uh, 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 powerful Western countries yes. that have kept silent, and some of them openly uh, supporting, supporting Israel mm -hmm. and their genocidal acts. But um, basically, when it comes to, to, to the international community, um, we have seen that there's been a, 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 a major outpour yep. in support and, and sympathy for the Palestinian people. Mm -hmm. um, South Africa, Namibia, um, as former oppressed nations, um, we have stood up and we have said that from the river to the sea, yep. the Palestinians will be free. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, um, when South Africa, a former oppressed nation, an African country, yep. gets up and decides to take Israel to the International Criminal Court. It's a major deal. It's a major deal. And we, through our, uh, our weight against, uh, uh, behind uh, South, South Africa, Africa yes. and we said we're going to support them. Yep. By, by all means, we are going to support the people of Palestine um, with a heart that never quavers and a spirit undaunted. Mm -hmm. We're going to stand by the people of Palestine. Yep. And of course, we saw those events, uh, South Africa presenting its case mm. on January 11th. I believe it was a Thursday. Yes, it and was. Of course, Israel um, on the, the January 12th, mm. the Friday. Um, we saw some very interesting arguments. And, and I must say, I think a lot of us were also impressed by mm. the legal team uh, from South Africa. So talk to us about those particular developments, but also looking at tomorrow's uh, pronunciation of the International mm. Court of Justice. This order... Do you think that Israel will abide to this order? That is actually a very, very, very interesting question. Will it abide? Yeah. Will it uh, uh, um, stick to the ruling? Um, I think when it comes to, to this particular case, because it's a very delicate one, yeah. when it comes to this particular case, firstly, um, South Africa's legal team did brilliant mm -hmm. in presenting its case at the International Court of Justice. Yeah. Um, Advocate Adila Hassim, senior counsel, uh, um, attributed Israel's genocidal acts um, against the people of Palestine. Um, she, she, she highlighted the unprecedented uh, um, and atrocious acts yeah. committed by, by Israeli militants yes. against Palestinian civilians and highlighted uh, um, Israel's breach of Article 2A, mm -hmm. 2B, mm -hmm. 2C and yeah. 2D of the, of the Genocide yeah. Convention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, she further highlighted the situation on the ground in terms of the destruction of, of, of significant infrastructure, infrastructure shops, yeah. yes. hospitals, everything yeah. basically. Um, so when it comes to, 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 to the ruling tomorrow, yeah. South Africa presented a solid case. Yeah. And what I loved about the case that Thursday is that uh, um, while the legal team was presenting, you could see on the screen what was actually happening on the ground. Yes. You could see video footage of, of, of how uh, um, aid vehicles, trucks were coming in and being yes. stormed yes. By, pal by Palestinian people because Israel has been blocking it the entire time. So when it comes to the ruling, uh, um, it's dire. So when it comes to the ruling, if the International Court of Justice, and I hope, yes. sides on the side of, with the side of, of South Africa and Palestine, yeah. um, this is a watershed uh, um, event yes. in international law. Yes. And it sets a precedent um, for, um, for the gravity of accountability yes. for such heinous uh, uh, acts. Yeah. And it also uh, um, speaks to how the international community, mm -hmm. how the world court yeah. will respond to, 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 to future heinous acts Absolutely. like those. Yeah. So will it abide um, at this particular juncture? Um, I do not know. Mm -hmm. And I also do not think it would, mm -hmm. seeing as how for the past years, more than 100 years, um, it has never really abided by anything. Would you say that the onus then lies on the international community? Because oftentimes we criticize these yes. institutions. We criticize yes. the African Union, we criticize yes. the International Criminal Court, the Security Council, mm. uh, blaming them of being toothless, so to say. Yes. But oftentimes it comes down to these member states who are mm. countries, who are you and me, who are leaders, who are, you mm. know, to hold each other accountable because in essence these institutions are just there to propel yes. these, proper, mm. these processes you know but at the end of the day the execution of these orders these judgments is what comes down to member states mm. heads of states people like you and i etc yes do you think that the international community will stand or choose a side um, as far as this issue is concerned 
I believe um, even if Israel does not abide, mm -hmm. um, the international community is going to stand by, by the people of mm -hmm. Palestine. Mm -hmm. Because there is in no way that we, can, that we can witness ethnic cleansing and genocide in the 21st era. There is in no way. When, I never uh, thought um, I would see this, that, that no, in my life. Yeah. Um, they, uh, when it came to, to anti-Semitism and the extermination campaign by Germany against, uh, um, against the Jews, we saw an outcry by the international community uh, um, basically uh, 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 um, addressing the violations, yeah. you know, calling Germany to order. Yeah. So I do believe that the international community, countries like South Africa, countries like, like Namibia, um, all other countries who have stood on the side of, of Palestine yeah. are not going to watch Israel continue with its heinous acts yeah. if tomorrow's provisional ruling is in favor of South Africa and Palestine. Yeah. And if it is not, then we do see on which side uh, um, the International Court of Justice uh, um, sides with in terms of international law. We will see how the, 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 the framework yes. is then used. Very much indeed. Yes. William, unfortunately we are pressed for time, but I wanted to ask you uh, one last question. Yes. There, there's, there's a serious look into mm. the definition, the terminology of genocide at this point mm. in time. And there's a serious look into the convention as well mm. uh, on genocide at this point in time. Once more, just lastly, what precedence, regardless of the outcome um, of this case, mm. does this set as far as conflicts around the globe uh, on this planet here? Uh, when it came to setting the precedent, um, we're going to see basically how the framework of international law is used either equally yeah. or unequally. Yeah. Because if it so happens that the International Court of Justice, the World Court, mm -hmm does not sanction, does not uh, 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 allow justice to prevail, yeah. then that uh, uh, changes the very fabric of our society yeah. to what do we allow, what do we not allow? What are then heinous acts? What are then not heinous acts? Mm -hmm. So is it going to say that as the International Court of Justice, yeah. that they're going to, to, to in whole or in part, and in part uh, um, allow the ethnic cleansing and the genocide yes. that's happening, not just in Palestine, but if it occurs in Namibia tomorrow or next week in yep. Tanzania. Yep. So it sets, it, it sets a legal precedent uh, um, in terms of how we're going to address these issues yes. and these heinous violations going forward and sets a gravity for the accountability framework. Absolutely. William, thank you for being here this morning. Wonderful. Thank you for talking with us and sharing your insights. Uh, big day tomorrow indeed. It is. We'll be looking it forward is. to what happens there. We'll be joining at yep. 2 p.m. tomorrow. Great, fantastic.